right, well, it's that time. V2 is out for Affinity Designer. So this is my video on the top five things that I've found from the new V2 release that I think are going to be useful for me as an illustrator in my workflow. So let's go ahead and get into it and show you all the cool things V2 has to offer. All right, gang, and welcome to Affinity V2. Now, let me give you my overall feeling on this update. I think we got some good tools that improve the speed of our workflow, make life a little bit easier, but we didn't get the tools that we were clamoring for. So I don't think there's anything really revolutionary here, but there is definitely some good evolutionary time savers. So I've narrowed it down to the top five tools that I use. So let's go ahead and get started with the shape builder. Now to do the shape builder, we're going to start off by doing multiple shapes. Okay. So I've got a rectangle, I've got a circle and I've got this area. So what we're going to do first and foremost, we're going to kind of line all these up so that they work together. And what we're going to be making here is a little beaker. Okay. So we're going to take this one. We're going to drop the corner. We're going to round it. Okay. All right, so that looks pretty cool. Now, what you've got to do, you want to select the shapes that you want to use with the shape builder. It took me about 15 minutes to figure this out. Then you grab the shape builder. Now, the shape builder is like the quick version of the operations. It does the same thing in less time. So right here we have the circle this little half circle and the rectangle. Now you see how they lit up when I went over them. That's what happens with the shape builder. Now the next thing you're going to do, you're going to decide on your drag method. I've been using freehand. So when you click here, you see that this becomes zebra striped. When you click here, this becomes zebra striped. So once these are selected, now you come up to your actions. I want to delete these sections from the object and away they go. Now with the shape builder still selected here, actually we got to select the shapes. I grab these areas and this, and now I have these three shapes. I go to the shape builder and now I drag freehand selecting all the shapes. And now I add, Bam, just like that. And now we have this really kind of interesting type of beaker here that we can put stuff in. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, the next tool I want to show you here is the vector warp. Warp has always been available in Affinity Photo. We now welcome it to the designer functionality and we can warp vector objects without destroying them. So let's go ahead. I'm going to choose kind of a minty green for this thing. And for the bottle, let's choose something in kind of like an off blue. I think that that's pretty good there. Now we're going to nest the rectangle inside the curve. Get inside the curve there. Perfect. And now what we want to do, we want to make it look like it's sloshing around. So with the rectangle, I'm now going to add a warp group. Now, warp group is an important term. What it's going to do, it's going to create a group. And whatever's in that group, it will warp. So we're just going to do one layer. But could you do multiple layers? Absolutely. And what I think I'm going to do here, I'm just going to use a very simple quad warp. And what the quad warp is going to allow us to do is just adjust this. Now, we can put in some different targets here. We can kind of do this, warp it a little bit just like that. That looks pretty good. Now, you might be saying, well, yeah, but we could do that before with just adding some nodes and adjusting the handles. That's true. As I said, these are productivity upgrades. Now, the big productivity upgrade here, if you didn't want to do this anymore, you could take the rectangle out of the group and you could bring it right back. So this is non-destructive in its nature. This is huge. 
Now, the other tool that I like a lot is the vector knife. So with the vector knife, one of the things that we're gonna see here, we used to have to create nodes, then split the curves, all of that jazz. Now with the vector knife, we can come in, let's just do a rounded rectangle here. And let's say we wanna put a highlight in this bottle. We come over, let's make it white, rocket science, I know. All right, let's go ahead and move it over here. Now what's gonna happen is, we're gonna come over with the vector knife. Now watch the rounded rectangle here. We're gonna come over with the vector knife and I'm gonna decide that I'm gonna slice it. Now I'm going to use the stabilizer, same stabilizer that we had before, and I'm going to cut it apart. Now what just happened? The curve is now split. So I should be able to grab this part and get rid of it. Delete. This allows me to start cutting. And now I can just come over. I can change the blend mode up into here. Uh, let's do something maybe in a lighten. And let's go ahead and drop this down a little bit in opacity. All right, perfect. Now we're going to grab that again here. Okay. All right. So that is the vector knife. Now, the other one that I like here, let's go ahead and take a look at the quick grid. Now, with this, with the quick grid, we're going to go ahead and we're going to work with a circle. So circle, I'm going to hold shift. Now, this is the awkward one. With shift held and my mouse held, now... I come up and I hit the right arrow key. I hit the right arrow key. Every time I hit the right arrow key, this increases. And then I can increase the spacing by holding the right arrow key for a minute. And if I hit down, I get multiple instances. If you hit up, you get less instances. Now, I will tell you, I have not found a great use for this yet. I'm thinking about one of those art station type of panel layouts, or I tend to use power duplicate to get to this point. But if you decide this is what you want to do, we now have the option of quick grid. Ta-da. However, one of the nice things that I do like is the style picker. So let's say I decide to trick out this circle. If I come out over here and I put a big old stroke on it, just like that, and then I decide that I'm going to put a layer effect on it, let's go ahead and throw a little bit of a bevel on it. Okay. Let's put an outer bevel on it. Yeah, let's do inner. All right, there we go. All right, so now, watch this. If I decide I want to apply this to every other circle, I come over to my tools. You remember the color picker? You can now go to style picker. Now watch this. Pay attention to the instructions. Click to load format. When you click this shape, it loads all of the style information. Now you can come over and just apply this style all over, all over everywhere, all day, every day. All right, so we went through the style picker. We went through the quick grid. We went through the vector knife. We went through the vector warp. And we started this journey with the shape builder. Folks, my feeling on the upgrade is we got some huge productivity gainers. These are not revolutionary tools, but they are tools that get us closer to an efficient workflow. So if you like this and you want more content on Affinity, including the V2 upgrades, don't forget to follow us here on YouTube or check us out at 7seasonstudios.com for the best training on Affinity software for both designer, photo, and soon-to-be publisher. All right, we'll see you in the next one.